My next guest, you know, from Trolls World Tour, he's got a new Quibi show called Nice One. And of course, his great podcast, Getting Better. Please welcome Ron Funches. Ron, how are you? I'm good, Moses. How are you? What a great conversation you just had. Yeah, Roy's the best, right? Honestly, the first comedian I ever met. That's a good um, first. Some people get really bad first. I think the first one I met was a guy named Chicago Steve Barkley, and his advice to me was to do cruise ships, so that way I only (laughs) had to work three months a year. He was doing great. Chicago Steve Barkley was doing great till just this year. Everybody knows Chicago Steve. Would you have fun on a cruise ship? I can't imagine, because you want to leave after the show. I feel like you're the same way, but I don't want to be here. Yeah, I don't like attention. I like attention when I choose to have it and then I'd like it to be over. So I would hate it. People coming over to me thinking that I want to like drink or hang out, you know, or continue to tell jokes. No. Right. Or just find a bathroom that's not in the small room. And it's like, I just want to shit. I don't want to be like, you know, let's take a photo. Mm -hmm. First off, I know a lot of people that have had a lot of uh, birthdays in, in quarantine, but not a lot of people are getting married. You just got married. So Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was beautiful. What was it, uh, what was it like getting, getting married with the new COVID restrictions, sort of a smaller thing? How was that for you? I mean, it was different. Of course, we wanted to have a bigger wedding. We wanted, you know, and this being my, my second marriage is something I never thought that I would do. I was pretty much after my first marriage, I thought I was scared straight and that I would not have it happen again. So the second marriage of the lockdown, you've, you've been yeah. moving quick. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> you've been dating a lot against the CDC advice. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a lot. People are lonely. It's, it's yeah. all pickings out there. Uh, <laughs> was there a part of you that's like, this is kind of nice that so you don't have to worry about the two sides of the family, the stress of what everyone's eating. You could yeah. just be with your closest friends and your oh, son. Absolutely. You know, and I wanted to be able to just kind of like scream it from the mountaintop and have everyone be there. But it actually was really nice to be like, oh, this is just for us. Just for, we love each other. It's very low key and chill. And it was a great excuse not to invite any racist family members. So yeah, yeah. that is great to not have to deal with the family dynamics. Mm-hmm. I yeah. wonder how long I'm, I'm with someone that I for sure want to marry. I wonder how long I could push the COVID excuse to not do a full wedding, to be like, you know, I just still don't feel safe. It's 2027. No, I think just get it done now. It's A, it's cheaper and people get excited about it. You get to wear a fun mask. So it looks like you're getting married in Mortal Kombat. (laughs) A lot of, there's a lot of positives. You're about to fight your wife. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you had a great suit. That Clearly two deaf do us part. (laughs) Yeah, and then you fight. Fatality. A venue's gotta be cheap right now. Mm-hmm. You could have any venue you want. It was just a fun event. And, and it was kind of like the opposite of my first wedding, which was like a lot of pop and circumstance to kind of showcase that we were, pretend we were solid when we were not. And this one was just like, hey, we just love each other. Let's go get married. We'll come home, take some pictures, order some food, watch 90 Day Fiance. Do you think part of the, having a huge wedding helps in the... I don't know, tempting this to get divorced because I always think about this. You have such a big party and you speak in such sure terms at the wedding. Mm-hmm. I, I, from the moment I knew, and then everyone gets up that ever met you, that if you have a bad day in the marriage, you're like, well, I'm not going to get divorced. I told all that those people how great everything was. Yeah, now it was a secret. So I could just be like, you know what? Nobody knows. No harm, no foul. Let's just get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened. Like a lot of these quarantine content shows, like no one's going to remember this time. This is the time you want to take some wild swings. Yeah, I think it was the best decision I've made in a long, long time. That's great. And, and you're locked down with someone that you, that you love. A lot of people don't have that. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's very nice. Um, that's why I tell her. I was like, you know, I asked her, we got engaged in November before it. And I was like, I think I was 85% sure then. But since the quarantine, I'm 100% sure because you are someone that I can be locked in a room with for 24 hours a day. And we, we don't hate each other. We just continue to have fun and yeah, laugh. Yeah, that's really beautiful. I feel exactly the same way. Uh, it's a very challenging time for us, but it is. It brought me closer to her and yeah. it made me more sure of like, You yeah. need that sometimes, especially if you come from kind of, I know we, I, we don't have super similar backgrounds, but we come from 
but similar in ways. And I think sometimes you're like, well, of course you like me now. Things are going great. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah, this is, we're at my peak mental health right now, but this is not always. That's what I wanted to talk to you about because we did have a, a similar background, didn't grow up with uh, well, be any money, well below the poverty line. Other things happen. Don't want to put anyone on blast, but very rough things. And all this, everyone's like, this is the worst year. It's still not as bad mm -hmm. as our childhood. It still feels like, yeah, yeah it gets feels, worse than this. That makes you feel strong, but then it also makes you feel sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I was like, feeling great well, about it. This isn't the worst I've been through. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's really not something to brag about. I was feeling good until you said that. I was like, well, oh, yeah, I thought that's about super it. sad. Yeah, you're like, oh, I've been through worse. And you're like, oh, I've been through worse. <laughs> no one should be have been through worse than this. This should be everyone's worst year. Yeah, and yet yeah. it's not. <laughs> it is weird because a part of it feels like, oh, I'm prepared for this. And it almost feels like all that stuff happened for a reason in a quasi way of like, mm. oh, yeah, that prepared me for this. Mm -hmm. I can live without any money. I can, you know, eat from the mm -hmm. garbage and scam people and all this. I'm not scamming people now, but. No, but I understand that. I mean, that, that's kind of just been my mindset and working in entertainment and where, you know, th the more I've done acting and been on set and see a lot of people take things very seriously and, and as if it was the end of the world. And, and my background, uh, my childhood has at least let me go like, well, you know, oh, what's the worst thing you can do is fire me and tell me no and like take the part away. Okay. Right. That's, I've been through much worse than that. So um, that, that has been helpful. And I, I think, you know, people who've been through trauma um, either, you know, they get re-triggered by these, these type of things, but a lot of times you, like you said, you know what to do. Um, I knew at least, you know, for, for my friends that needed it, even if I didn't, I go like, hey, I know you, these are the services you need to start going and applying for because there's going to be a backlog of people rushing to go get them. You know, I was telling all my friends that type of stuff to like, you know, apply for loans, apply for grants, apply for food stamps, apply for everything. Don't have any type of uh, pride that stops you from getting the help even before, you know, don't wait until you really, really need it to go get it. You know, exactly. It's like we're paying into the system anyways. We, we it's, it's our tax money, even though the government makes you feel like it's this huge favor. It's this huge handout. Even getting those $1,200 checks out was like, we send you checks every April, every April. It's not a problem. It's very discreet. How come it's this huge deal with the government? Like, I, I just don't know how we would get that to you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's one of the biggest trick to, to make like, you know, asking for what is owed and what belongs to you is, is some type of charity, you know? Yeah. Food stamps have gotten a little better. They've gotten a little more discreet. I don't know when you were on food stamps, but as I was on them, it was still the paper, mm -hmm. individual things you had to rip out in front of everyone in the store. No, I've been through both sides. I remember the paper and then I remember having the little credit card that made you feel like at least as long as no, you know, you had some cashiers who would put it up and, and make sure that it was showcased to the world. But yeah. for a lot of times people would just be discreet, you know, and wouldn't even go. They go debit credit, you pass the card, they and then you know, the mean ones go, Oh, EBT, you know, but the cool ones right. they don't the say nod. Yeah. Well, there is a way to tell, because they do look like debit cards. It's a very easy way to tell, um, because the EBT cards, the food stamp cards, uh, never work. <laughs> they make sure that it never, you put it in, eh, eh, immediately goes off. It's black licorice on the back, this little magnetic strip. <laughs> Ours never work. They had to turn a key. Did you ever see a key in a register mm -hmm. before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It's a missile strike. Like, the two managers had to turn a key <laughs> that you could eat. We had to bomb another family in a third world country if you really want this milk. Yeah, and you did. And you did. Yeah, I just don't understand why we, so much money is going their way. And it's such, it's pulling teeth and it has to be the most embarrassing thing when it comes the other way. It's like, well, this is what we pay you for. We pay you for these services so that you can take care of us in the rare case there's an emergency. Yeah, well, I think that's, you know, one of the, unfortunately... Um, necessary things that's been going on is people understanding that, um, you know, these fail safes that they think there are a place for them aren't necessarily true and you have to protect yourself and protect your family. And I think that's a lesson yeah. that gets taught very quickly to people of color. That is a lesson that all people need to know. Yeah. People need new stuff right now. We're getting to a point, I get March is like, there's enough shows out, but now we're at a point where it's like, 
the, all of the movie industry is shut down. Things are slowly coming back, but we need new stuff. And no one's going to go back and watch a season of Lilyhammer. <laughs> so it's like, well, yeah, do an out of focus Zoom show. It's at least something new, and at least trying. Yeah, and something trying, continue to get better. I've been doing a lot of things on Twitch, just like like Roy was saying, just like I'm trying to continue to build an audience and build a community. And if it's if I can't go out and do shows, like the thing that I love doing is staying at home and playing video games. And if I can invite people who are like, oh yeah, I want to play a couple rounds with you, and we sit around and chat, and they ask me about my projects, and then the next thing. I know they're buying a shirt or they're or they're downloading Quibi to watch my show. And I realize like, oh, there's a value to this in many forms. You know, people are hanging out here because they like me or why would they even be here? Right. And B, I get to build this community and just actually talk to people and hang out and play games and have do the things I like instead of, you know, even on my Twitter and, and Instagram, you say you know, the wrong thing. I get a you know text from my manager being like what's going on? like what did you do and nobody's yeah. watching my twitch currently so i guess i shouldn't promote it <laughs> well, i've been watching that you've been playing call of duty yeah yeah i know it gives me a place to talk mad trash and, and so i get i don't want people, to too many people to find out yeah oh yeah to children they sharp directly. they sharp for comedy you know mm -hmm. talking trash to children do you go in on the kids or are you like, you have a kid and say, like, I'll stay out of it. It depends it on how, how they are. If they come at me toxic, if they're very homophobic or if they're very, you know, racist, then I just get on them the whole game. But in my way, you know, where I just try to reason with them and ask them, you know, why, what's going on in your life? What made you act yeah. this way? You know, and they don't, they're not really usually ready to handle that. <laughs> no, just an adult speaking to them with compassion. It's like, I don't know, never asked me about my feelings before. Mm -hmm. Are you weeping on the other line? What is so? What's the show you're doing Saturday? Are you gonna have some audience, or is it all like this, where it's all it's all digital? Am I still frozen for you? Or are you okay? I don't know. Now I'm okay. back. Back. Okay. Yeah, all the so, people you've had the best setup so far you've had the, I, the oh best. i've been working i got a ring light i got a good microphone so thank you for saying that i appreciate that yeah it shows it's like a video game toy but it's you're lit like a beauty blogger <laughs> <laughs> they can see you saturday that's it's coming up a couple days mm -hmm. buy tickets for that show uh it sounds like you're doing it right you got 10 people it's all safe and then the podcast getting better Highly recommend that. Yeah, it's my favorite thing to do right now. You know, just providing affirmations and positivity, which I can be sorely needed. And and sometimes, you know, I get in, I get into some. However, I'm feeling. You know, I think this last week I was very down about you know losing Chadwick and and all the things that have been going on in in, in Wisconsin. And and so sometimes, you know, I, I it's positive, but I might be yelling and stuff as well. So. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's very refreshing. That's what we need. Thank you so much. Ron Funches, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.